woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Okay, ice cream scoops. Topic of today's demo. How many of you guys have done any of these ice cream scoops? Rick House? Butch, have you done one? Yeah. Not yet? Anybody? Okay, so just, just Rick. Okay. How many of you like to eat ice cream? <laughs> well, I, f I figured that'd be unanimous. Okay, well. Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to make the handle for the Wood River Stainless Steel ice cream scoop. These guys, I can tell you from using one, <laughs> This is one of the best ice cream scoops I've ever seen. This, this sharp little point here gets into a carton and it will scoop that ice cream out like nobody's business. Um, they're, they're solid stainless. It's a food grade stainless steel, of course. Um, and this is all one piece. This is all machined from one solid billet of stainless steel. You can, you can see there's a, a fairly long threaded stud here. Uh, by the way, the stud on this is threaded at 3 8 diameter by 16 threads per inch. Okay, that number should sound familiar to anybody who's made bottle stoppers, but we'll cover that a little bit later. Um, so once you once you insert this threaded stud into the handle, and with that that big heavy stainless steel ferrule on there to seal up the end grain of the wood, you've actually got something that's very very sturdy. Trust me, this thing is not going to come apart on you. The handle is not going to break out on you. Uh, it's, it's very, very solid in the handle. If you wanted to, you could actually uh, smear a little bit of thick CA or epoxy on these threads prior to screwing it into the handle and make it actually a permanent kind of attachment. Um, of course, you know, we all have to keep in mind that because this project is made out of wood, it is not dishwasher safe, okay? So in order to, you know, wash this, the, the owner is either going to have to, you know, unscrew it from the handle or just simply wash it by hand. That's really the best solution. Just wash it by hand, okay? So remember I said that this matches the thread pattern on uh, the bottle stopper the larger of the two bottle stopper kits, okay? Uh, 3 eighths of an inch by 16 threads per inch. So the way that I like to turn these is actually on the bottle stopper mandrel, okay? And you can see that it <laughs> it threads on there very nicely. So that's your bottle stopper mandrel, the 3 eighths by 16, okay? It's very solid attachment. Again, just screw it right on there. The hole that I drill prior to tapping those threads is a 5 16 hole, okay? And then I just tap it at 3 8 by 16, okay? Now, the, it, it, it would. And, and for those of you on the other side of the room here, the question was, could you put a threaded brass insert into the handle first? And the answer, Bob, it's actually an idea that I'm toying with right now, but what I haven't, have yet to figure out is if you can turn the tenon that the ferrule goes on to, to the diameter that you need that, and still be able to drill a hole into it that would be large enough to hold a 3 8 by 16 threaded insert. Um, his question was for for purposes of washing it would a threaded insert it fitted into the the handle here would it make it easier and more stable to put the the scoop in and take it out and put it in and take it out yes I think it would do exactly that uh, and that's something that I've been playing with trying to, to make sure that you can do that and not ruin the tendon part that the ferrule goes on to okay Yeah. So you just did it between centers. That's the other way that you can do it. Somebody, Tom, I think it might have been you were, was asking. Somebody was asking uh, how to turn these without using a, a mandrel. 
uh, and the other way would be just simply turning them between centers, a drive center and a live center. That would be the other way to do that. And yes, it is a little bit more difficult. Yeah, because the problem that you run into with that is then what do you do to finish off the end? How do you hang on to it other than to chuck the tenon in a, in a four jaw chuck? Use a longer piece, which would fit in the chuck. Yeah. And I parted it off just past the chuck and finished it from there. Yeah. So I had a piece to cut off. Yeah. So what Rick's talking about is using uh, a different technique of turning them, uh, using both a four jaw chuck and a method of just between centers turning. Um, of course, both methods would work just fine. Uh, I just happen to like doing it this way because at some point, you know, I can actually work the end of this blank without my live center in place. Um, you know, I can with it in, I can part through, remove most of this material, then pull my live center and actually finish off the end of it, okay? That's why I like using a collet chuck rather than, say, a, a drill chuck to hold this mandrel. Uh, that method will work as well. Just a, you know, a drill chuck uh, will hold that too. Drill chucks being on a Morse taper, though, tend to pull out every so often, okay? Requiring you then to very carefully reseat the thing uh, so that you have a good secure grip on it while you're trying to turn. Um, I like to call it chuck. That's, that's my preference. Now if you're using a drill chuck, which again will hold this mandrel without any trouble whatsoever, use what they call a draw bar that goes through the spindle. It's just simply a threaded uh, you know, piece of rod with thread on the end that matches the inside thread of your drill chuck. You put a washer and a wing nut, something like that, on the other end, tighten it up against your spindle here, and that will keep that drill chuck from trying to pull out. So, I mean, there are ways to get around that uh, other than this method. This just happens to be the way I like to do it. Lots of different ways to do things. Lots of different ways to do things. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right, so I started the process of turning this thing last night, uh, just in the interest of time. Because those of you that have been to my demos before know that I don't stick to, <laughs> I don't stick to the allotted time very well. That's probably because I just talk too much. <laughs> what was that, Ray? <laughs> For the benefit of the millions of you watching at home, <laughs> Ray has nothing to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've adjusted the height of the tool rest. We're going to be using the rougher here. I could switch over to the finisher at this point since I've already gotten it round. But we're going to go back to the rougher here. Now, one thing that's important to do is you need some way to measure the diameter of that tenon, okay? You've got to be able to get a good accurate measurement of this tenon here. Uh, and if we refer back to the instructions that come with your kit, <coughs> you're going to find out the tenon is 31 64ths of an inch in length, and it wants to be 55 64ths of an inch in diameter, okay? So I've got a couple of different ways that you can do that. Either use a little outside caliper like this, Okay, or use a digital caliper set to, anybody? 55 64 who said that? Was that you, Bob? Okay, <laughs> Bob gets a gold star for the day. 55 64ths, <laughs> 55 64 okay. So you can, use, you can use either method, whichever one you happen to have at home, okay. Uh, you know, but you need a good accurate measurement of this tenon, okay, because it has to fit inside this. And every so often it's not a terrible idea. Once you begin to get close to that measurement, stop, pull it off the mandrel, and check your fit. Okay? What's the inside of that measure? What, take a guess, Art. <laughs> Some people's kids. 
Some people's kids. Okay. Any other questions before I start making noise and dust? Okay. Now I'm going to run the lathe here for a little bit at about 24, 2500 RPM. Okay. We'll get that running. Don't forget your safety glasses. Easy wood tools. How many easy wood tool users we got? Lots of you. What do you? <laughs> nice tools, huh? Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of rough out the shape of the handle that I want here. So another nice thing about a project like this, there's no, there's no preconceived notion <clears throat> as to what this needs to look like. What shape does it need to be? What size does it need to be? You know, you've got all of that in your control. Okay, so we've kind of reached a, a somewhat pleasant shape there. So now what I want to do is actually come in here and start to get this tenon sized where I want it. And what that'll let me do then is finish shaping this portion right out here. Okay, I don't want to mess with this yet until I know where I need to end up at. Okay, so now we'll come in, easy wood tool. Just begin to reduce that diameter. Works very quickly. Now what you want to do as you're doing this is come in every few seconds or every minute or so, however long, and check to make sure where you're at with that diameter. And I like to use both tools in case one shifts without my knowing it. <laughs> Not that that's ever happened. <laughs> the other thing that I like to do is once I think I'm getting close, see how I just did a short part of that tenon that time? I'm going to come in and I'm going to double check just that part. That way, if by some strange turn of events I happen to get too far, and make it too small, I've still got some meat on the rest of the tenon that I can leave the diameter that I need it 